Well, gosh darn it. This is a video I never imagined myself making. I mean, after the depressingly bad first season that seemed determined to deconstruct and humiliate one of my favourite fictional characters, and an even worse follow-up whose main reason for being was to criticise US immigration policy, I considered myself well and truly done with Star Trek Picards. I mean, there's only so many times you can get burned before deciding, yeah, I'm done with this. I even made a really snooty video vowing never to review another episode again. And yet, here I am, about to deliver some of the most unexpected news of my entire YouTube career. Picard Season 3 is actually pretty good. That's... that's shocking. It's... it's unthinkable. I mean, let's be clear about a few things, it's still handcuffed to the ridiculous decisions of the previous showrunners, and it doesn't entirely manage to escape the looming shadow of New Trek, but I can say with all honesty that it's the single best Star Trek production to have come out in almost 20 years. And yeah, I know in terms of benchmarks that's a bit like saying it's the most likeable person to come out of a planet made up entirely of Brie Larson clones, but there it is. I felt like I was watching actual Star Trek again made by people who clearly understand and respect the franchise and don't just treat it as a convenient platform for THE MESSAGE. There's no pandering, no lecturing, no cynical deconstruction, no bullshit identity politics, just a good, solid Star Trek show that reunites a bunch of beloved characters for one final epic adventure, giving them the send-off that they never got from the movie series. Now, for obvious reasons, I can't reveal too much about what happens in the later episodes, mostly because I don't want to get sued by Paramount, so I'm going to do my best to give a basic premise for the season. Grab your phasers and Romulan ale, because the drinker's about to drunkenly go where no man has gone before. The story kicks off with Beverly Crusher and her son Jack on a clandestine mission outside Federation space, being hunted and attacked by a group of mysterious enemies. With nowhere else to turn, she sends out a coded distress call to Picard, who's busy chilling at his vineyard in France. Naturally, he wants to help her, but with no ship at his disposal and Starfleet unwilling to help, he's forced to team up with Riker so that they can blag their way onto a Federation starship and rescue Bev. Unfortunately for them, the captain isn't the most cooperative of guys, and he seems to have a particular beef with Picard, but luckily, they just so happen to have a man on the inside. Or woman in this case. So with a little help from Seven of Nine, they're able to divert the ship and rescue Bev and Jack. But unfortunately that's just the beginning of their problems, as they soon find themselves being hunted by a powerful enemy warship, whose commander seems to have a particular interest in Jack. Meanwhile, on the other side of the galaxy, Rafi is working as an undercover intelligence operative, trying to infiltrate a terrorist group that stole a powerful new weapon from a high security research facility. And as the two storylines converge, Picard and the gang begin to uncover a conspiracy that reaches to the very highest levels of the Federation. There's an awful lot that I want to say about the storyline for this season, but it's kind of difficult to go into details without spoiling it for people, so what I'll say instead is that if you've seen the TNG episode Cons conspiracy, then you're going to have a pretty reasonable idea of the general setup here. There's a lot of paranoia and subterfuge going on, a lot of tense interactions between people who don't know who they can trust, and the show does a really good job of ratcheting up the tension and intrigue with each new episode. Every new revelation adds more layers to a deepening mystery, so that you always feel like the characters are making good forward progress and figuring things out, but that they're also one step behind their enemies. It's all good stuff, and it reminds me very much of Undiscovered Country in a lot of ways. An aging crew embarking on one last mission, racing against time to prevent some disastrous event that could destroy the entire Federation. And the thing that makes it so compelling is the absolute seismic change that's come over the writing for this show. Every single aspect from the character interactions to the shipboard routines, the world building, the combat scenes, the emotional tone and all the little references and callbacks to past events are handled with such care and love that it's like a completely different show. The first season of Picard was a grim, bleak, violent and depressing nightmare that had about as much connection to the hope and optimism of Star Trek as Event Horizon. 
Yeah, there's definitely still phaser battles and fist fights, but that underlying tone of mean-spirited hopelessness has been shown the fucking door. Another thing that used to absolutely boil my piss about modern Star Trek is the way that starships are basically treated like adult daycare centers, where supposedly professional crewmen act like hyperactive, developmentally challenged children, constantly backchatting superior officers, bursting into tears and yelling at each other during tense moments, and generally treating the chain of command like an optional set of guidelines they can ignore whenever it's inconvenient. But here, characters finally act like real adult humans again. They show respect towards superior officers. They stay composed and professional in crisis situations. They work together to find solutions to difficult problems and generally don't feel the need to voice every dumb thought that pops into their heads. In short, you can actually get invested in these people because they look like they can do the jobs that they're doing. This change is reflected in the main cast as well. Season 1 was all about breaking Picard down as a character, humbling him, making him old and weak and irrelevant, and constantly upstaged and insulted by his younger and more diverse counterparts. Picard actually thinks, talks and acts like Picard again. He's confident and assertive at vital moments. He gets to use his decades of hard-won experience to fight his way out of tough situations. He stands up for himself when people go after him and even calls them out for their bullshit instead of laying down and apologising for his own existence. By all accounts, Patrick Stewart himself had a lot of creative input on his character in Season 1, something I think we can all agree was a universally bad idea, and I can only assume that they revoked this for Season 3 because he's a completely different man now. I mean, yeah, Stewart's getting pretty old now and he's kind of frail, but he does the absolute best that he can with what he's got left. And since this season was very much about bringing the old band back together, Crusher, LaForge and Worf all get a chance to shine too. Just like Picard, they're all older now, they've got more baggage than before, and they're having to deal with the fact that they're moving into their autumn years, but the chemistry between them is as strong as ever. I've got to admit, I especially liked Worf, who gets some of the show's best lines, delivered in Michael Dorn's perfect deadpan style. There was an understandable bit of backlash at the revelation that he's a pacifist now, but honestly, it's played more like a recurrent gag than a serious character choice. In reality, he's more like a warrior monk now, wiser and more reflective than before, but when it's time to slice and dice people, he's just as happy to get stuck in as he always was. Now, I have to admit, I never really understood how or why Seven of Nine fit into the TNG universe. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the character as much as the next guy, and damn, Jerry Jerry Ryan still got it, man, but she always felt awkwardly forced into a situation that she had no history with. But to be fair, she's finally got an actual reason for being involved in this now, and I enjoyed her relationship with Shaw, the cantankerous and resentful captain of the Titan. If this was Star Trek Discovery, then he would have been treated as just another toxic white male who needs to be taken down a peg or two, preferably by a strong, empowered woman of colour. But instead, he's gradually revealed to be a decent man, a skilled engineer, and a capable commander who cares about the safety of his crew, makes sound decisions under pressure, and gradually wins over the respect of the others. He even has a justifiable reason for being an asshole towards Picard. Wow, it's almost like this is... Good character development. All good stuff indeed, but for me, I think the star of the show might actually be Riker, and that pleases me no end. I've always had a soft spot for the character because you could kind of tell that the original TNG writers never quite knew what to do with him. He was basically created as a James Kirk 2.0, always waiting in the wings but never able to take centre stage, and a lot of his character arcs revolved around his reluctance to spread his wings and take on his own commands. But here, you really get to see the kind of captain that he's become, and watching him and Picard work together as old friends and fellow officers is just awesome. It's the kind of stuff that should have been happening way back in season one, instead of watching Riker sit around by the lake and burn fucking pizza. Now, all of this stuff is great, but don't let it fool you into thinking that season three is above reproach. Some of the dialogue feels kind of rushed and clunky at times, like they probably could have done with a few more drafts to polish up certain scenes, and there's maybe a few too many attempts at quippy MCU-style humour for my liking. It's definitely not terrible or anything, but in a show where the writing is generally strong and competent, you do tend to notice the occasional dips in quality just that little bit more. There's a ton of callbacks and references to past adventures, some of which which are pretty fucking obscure even for me. Like, if you haven't seen every single season of TNG, plus 
plus all of the movies, you're definitely going to be lost with a few of them. Don't get me wrong, I've got to commend the writers for their sheer enthusiasm here, but it does skirt dangerously close to pandering at times, like they're so eager to please that they're almost tripping over themselves to work in as many easter eggs as possible. And of course, there's still a few uncomfortable hangovers from the earlier seasons. Picard is still a robot, Seven is still inexplicably gay for Rafi, and characters still drop occasional f-bombs that feel about as appropriate as a drag show at a kindergarten. Like I say, these are inherited problems for the most part that I'm sure the writers would happily erase if they could, but they do serve as little reminders that yes, Star Trek has indeed gone down the shitter over the past 10 years. The production design and visual effects are generally really good, and holy shit, it's nice to be aboard a ship that's more than just an empty warehouse with a cockpit at one end, but I can't say I'm a massive fan of the dark, moody look that every starship seems to have now. Like, it almost feels like a health and safety hazard for the poor bridge crew that have to walk around in almost total darkness. I mean, are light bulbs like really expensive in the 24th century or what? But the thing is, most of these issues are really just minor gripes, because that's the level I have to go to to criticise this show now. For the most part, none of them really undermined the experience for me. Even now, I can't quite believe that I'm saying this, but Picard Season 3 isn't just good Star Trek by modern standards, it's a pretty good TV show by any standards. It's smart, thoughtful, compelling, and unlike most of modern Trek, it actually has an emotional heart made by people who clearly care about it. But the ultimate question of course is, where the hell do we go from here? I mean, I'm under no illusions that one good season of one TV show is going to magically make up for a decade of disastrous failures and vandalization. There's people watching this video right now that have probably vowed never to come back to Star Trek no matter what, and to be honest, I don't entirely blame them for that. But for me, Picard is proof that it can be done. Shows and franchises can turn themselves around if they've got the right people working on them. And more than that, I think there has to be a way back. Not just for Star Trek, but for all of the franchises that have suffered so much in recent years. Because just giving up and walking away forever is like admitting defeat, conceding ground that might one day be won back. So I guess what I'm saying here is that I see Picard as the first step on a long road to redemption for Star Trek. It's not going to win back all the fans pushed away by years of abuse, accusations and terrible creative output, but at the very least, it's got to be a start. Ultimately, I can't make you watch it, but if you're willing to keep an open mind and give it a couple of hours of your time, then I'm pretty sure you won't regret it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.